Hi everyone, I am Susan Jacob and uh, this is an interesting video where I show how I got a type 3 bubble and I converted it into a type 2 and then performed air pump assisted DMIC. So here's a patient who had pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. What I do first is estimate the graft size that I would be requiring and then I go on to prepare the PDEC graft. So you can see that uh, I was trying to prepare a PDEC graft which is a type 1 big bubble and I've also obtained the type 1 big bubble but if you look carefully at the 6 o'clock position you will also see that simultaneously there's also a type 2 big bubble forming which is a DMIC graft. So this is actually a type 3 big bubble which consists of a combination of type 1 that is a PREC and a type 2 that is a DMIC graft in the same donor button. And this would result in a split graft if I cut it at this position or at this point and that would definitely make surgery very very difficult. So you can see what I do is I advance the needle edge beyond the extent of the type 1 big bubble into the area where only the type 2 is there and I continue to inject medium to expand just the type 2 big bubble preferentially and you can see that's almost expanded fully except a small area at 12 o'clock and I go ahead and inject just a little bit more of storage medium slowly and carefully to expand that terminal undissected bit as well. Now viewing the graft in profile with the endoilluminator light, you can clearly see uh, the type 3 bubble that is a type 1 big bubble inside covered by the type 2 on the outer side. Now I go ahead and use a sideboard blade to decompress both the type 1 as well as the type 2 big bubbles and then slowly refine the graft using a sharp refine and uh, there are some undissected bits unfortunately because of the spongy nature of the cornea below and these are gently cut uh, making sure to leave no tags with a vanna scissor. I go ahead and stain the DMIC graft now. A point that I would like to make at this point is when you're in enlarging a DMIC graft using storage medium or air you have to be very very careful and very very slow because it can burst much much sooner than a pre endothelial keratoplasty graft. So once we've stained the graft, we turn our attention to the patient's eye and I insert an anterior chamber maintainer for my technique of air pump assisted PREC. You can see that the ACM is connected to the air pump and it is continuously infusing air into the anterior chamber. Now Desmetorex is under an air bubble has been described by Tan et al. Uh, what I'm doing here is using uh, the pressurized air infusion and this gives better visibility. Now what uh, the air pump assisted uh, PREC or DMIC technique really helps in are these steps. Uh, for example, the peripheral iridectomy, you can see that as I did it, there is a tendency for it to bleed when the pressure in the anterior chamber decreases because of the instrument that I'm passing inside. But as soon as I remove the instrument, you can see that the continuous pressurized air infusion tamponades that bleeding and I can wash it out and again let the air tamponade the bleeding completely. The air also prevents ooze of blood into the anterior chamber from the peripheral neovascularization that is often seen in these patients. So uh, you can see that I have loaded the graft into the injector and I'm using my EDMEC technique or endoluminate assisted DMEC technique to verify that the graft is in the correct orientation even before injecting it into the anterior chamber and once injected I quickly go ahead and suture the incision shut. Now when I look at the anterior chamber I am in for a little surprise because I see a vitreous strand that is there in the anterior chamber and I attempt a vitrectomy first but because of the chances of the graft getting uh, aspirated into the vitrector I decide to abandon that and instead use the vitreous as my friend in trying to unfold the graft. So you can see that the vitreous is actually acting as a scaffold there over which I can unfold the graft much more easily. I go ahead and center the graft into position now before floating it up. Now you can see that once I have unrolled the graft completely, I uh, inject air underneath it through a cannula that is uh, inserted under the graft. So once the air is in position, it is time to start the air infusion again through the uh, anterior chamber maintainer and you can see that it actually helps me uh, by preventing a graft dislocation even when instruments are entering the eye. Now I am at present doing a vitrectomy uh, for the vitreous trans with continuous air running into the eye and uh, the graft is held up and I am able to clear the vitreous strand that was in the anterior chamber completely. Of course needless to say the ACM had been turned off from the point of insertion of the graft and uh, the graft was unfolded with BSS in the anterior chamber. So you can see this is the post-operative appearance of the patient uh, with a very clear cornea, a well-attached graft and good visual acuity. Though the use of air has been described for desmetorexis and for graft adhesion, my technique of air pump assisted PREC utilizes air for a variety of other steps and with great advantage.
using pressurized air infusing through the anterior chamber maintainer by means of an air pump has uh, great advantages especially in pedic surgery where it can also be used to effectively center the graft unfold extreme peripheral edge folds as well as increase the graft and also within the anterior chamber acting as a third hand during all steps to prevent graft dislocation and to prevent anterior chamber fluctuations i do hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you so much